Uh, there's another set of speakers. I'm uh, doing some work too. These are techniques. Uh, looks like uh, what SP 2765s. So again, for another a friend of mine. These things, uh, I'm not sure what the date is on them. Probably back in the maybe late 70s, 80s. I was just sending a signal to it uh, from a uh, online tone generator, just driving the uh, woofer. Well, this one's already been uh, refoamed here, and this one needs to be done. You can see it's got a little cut right there. It's starting to go, not really too bad, but foam is starting to deteriorate. Now, the problem with these speakers is that cone is not a standard size, so there's no foam to uh, that really fits it. So what you have to do is buy a standard size and then uh, cut it and uh, shrink it down um, to the correct size. So that's what I did here. You can kind of see the right there. It's actually a mark that's on it where I joined the two pieces. So it seemed to work. I did it with this side already and uh, they've been playing well. So I'll go ahead and do this other side over here and kind of do some documentation on how to go about this process of um, shrinking a standard size um, foam surround down to the size that you need. Okay, so trim ring removed. And... Uh, Here's the metal frame of the speaker itself and the attachment screws to attach it on. Okay, with the uh, speaker removed, I've pulled it out and reached behind here and marked uh, red and green uh, where the wires go to make sure I get the polarity correct when reconnect it. And just disconnect those and pull the I was having a real hard time reading that date code there. It's kind of smeared on both of the woofers. It looked like there was an 87 in it. So what I did is uh, stuck the camera inside the uh, uh, hole here left by the uh, woofer and just kind of and I'll show you. Just turned it around and then stuck it in there and took a picture of those drivers and then zoomed in and checked the date code. Both of them were from 87. So it looks like those uh, Technique speakers uh, were made in 1987. Now you can see also on the, the woofer here that the foam is attached to the back of the uh, this white cone uh, to, to make it a nice neat line here. So that's a little bit more difficult to do but not too hard. You see this foam is uh, got a crack there. You can see how it's starting to peel up. It wasn't terrible but it's definitely time to go ahead and refoam these guys. And again this roll uh, diameter and the actual foam itself is not a standard and uh, I couldn't find one uh, that's made to fit it, so we're going to have to custom fit uh, standard size. The first thing to do is to go ahead and tear this stuff off and uh, get the speaker ready for the new foam. So we'll take all this off and then with a razor knife scrape all this off of the basket. And then reach around and scrape the best we can um, the material off the back of the white cone. That's what I'll do now. And now the process of removing this stuff is you just kind of get in there and uh, the razor knife just start scraping with this stuff a little bit at a time until you get it all taken off. Yeah, a little laborious process but what it takes. So I won't record all that, but uh, let me turn the camera off and complete that. And I'll... We 
What do you think, Peter? Is this interesting? Huh? Interesting? Maybe? Oh, well, maybe. Mm, cocking your head. Well, anyway, we got the um, basket kind of cleaned up here. Scraping all the uh, glue and old uh, foam um, surround off. So now the real fun part is getting to the back side of this white cone and trying to scrape this stuff off. Pretty much what you do is just take the knife, uh, you know, from under here, get behind there and try to scrape at it and get as much as you can. Um, it helps too to get a little bit of alcohol on a paper towel and uh, rub it down too. But um, this is going to take both hands, so I'm going to turn the camera off and see what we can do. You may not be able to tell on the camera, but I've used the uh, razor knife and gone through here at an angle and uh, trimmed that down and gotten off a layer of this, you know, the foam material that was glued onto the back. Um, a lot of times this deteriorates so much that this stuff just peels off really easily. This is still stuck on pretty good, uh, although it's a much thinner la layer because I've got all this off of it. So, uh, you know, it's kind of a hard thing to do because you gotta, don't want to cut that paper cone, but you want to scrape off as much of the uh, foam residue that uh, you can. I'll go ahead and get some... Um, and some uh, alcohol on a paper towel and see if I can rub some more of that off to clean it up just a little bit more. Alright, I got the uh, cone cleaned up as good as I could. Still got a little bit of residue back here, but I think the uh, surround will glue okay to the back of that. Here's the surround I'm using. So again, it's not going to go on the front side of the cone. It has to go on the back side. This, this surface right here will go on the back side. So what you do is you tuck it under here. And we'll check the fit. At first glance, it looks like it fits, but then you can see it can move around quite a bit. When you get it to fit right in one spot, it's actually you got a gap there. You know, in another spot over here. So what I'm going to do is cut the co cut the uh, foam right here, and then cut out a small section, then bring it together, and then take that section and glue it on the back to uh, make this a little bit smaller and make it fit properly on uh, on the cone. That's the next step. Alright, so we're ready to trim this surround down. Just take some regular scissors and cut straight across. And then you get it back there, uh, <coughs> you know, tuck this in again. Back behind the cone. And we'll overlap these two pieces here. Easier said than done. Gonna bring it in like that. And then you inch this in a little bit at a time until it looks like you, know, you got the proper uh, distance here on the where the uh, paper cone meets the surround. So that's pretty close right there. A little bit more maybe. Tuck it in some more. Okay, so we got well, maybe three quarters of an inch of overlap. Okay, I'm going to call that good. So now I'll get a marker. What I'll do is just mark this right here where I need to do 
do the second cut. Okay, and we'll take that out. See, we got our mark there. Just cut across that. Now we'll butt these two ends together and then put this overlapping on top of the two to kind of make a strong bond. And we'll glue that all together so that that's one piece. Now I got this uh, surround kit from uh, Simply Speakers. So they have this real fast setting glue which makes you know, it's a little easier to do. Um, I actually called them and asked, uh, told them what type of speaker I had, and gave them the measurements. And they said, "Yeah, there's nothing. There's no foam that they had that would match that." And then I suggested, "What about doing the uh, this process of cutting the the foam and uh, making it smaller?" And they said, "Yep, that's kind of what we do. We come across that situation. So that's what I'm going to do here. So here's my little patch." So I'm going to put that behind these two pieces. So I'll go ahead and put some of this uh, kind of clear fast setting glue on this section of the uh, foam. And just glue that right on the back. Remember the whole process that I used on the other one. I think I did something similar. And then I'll just put a little more glue on this section. And then try to get these two pieces to line up as close as you can. That's pretty good. So I will and just hold this in place while this glue sets and it doesn't take a whole long time really that long it's pretty fast setting I'll just keep uh, manipulating that so that it uh, has a nice straight fine line okay that just took about uh, 60 to 90 seconds of just kind of holding that joint together so that it uh, glue cured up and it's bonded together. So now you can see that's butted up uh, properly and we got the little patch that we cut out uh, on the back side of that kind of reinforcing it. So that's what it'll look like. After that cures for a few more minutes we'll go ahead and uh, put it on the speaker and see how it fits. And now that the uh, joint here is properly cured, what we'll do is put that back on. So we got to get this gluing surface on the cone underneath the cone because we're going to glue it to the back side. So we've got to tuck it in there. There we go. Try to check it for fit. Notice now that. There's no real gap around uh, where the roll of the foam comes in and uh, meets the cone. It fits nice and snugly. So we're going to get the joint lined up with the top of the speaker, which is uh, where the... Uh, where the connections are, electrical connections. So let me pull that off. And get it lined up here. And that'll be at the very top, probably the less visible part of the speaker. And you have the speaker grill off. There we go, the joints lined up with the electrical connections. And we'll go ahead and start gluing. So what I'm going to do is get the glue out. And 
reach back here and try to get a nice bead on that on that inner surface. This is a little tough because you're reaching behind the cone. Eighth inch bead all the way around the circumference there of the foam. Okay, I made it all the way around. Now get it all lined up. And you can reach behind here and try to get the uh, foam to meet the cone. Flip it over behind and reach through the holes here to get it to, to bond. Make sure you got good coverage. Uh, if there's a dry spot, you can always reach inside here with the glue and add a little bit more. That's probably what I'll have to do. If it looks like it's not sticking down properly. kind of a process here. This takes a little while, so turn the camera off while I get that glued on. Alright, this uh, surround now is well attached to the cone. It's going to stay on. So now what we need to do is glue it down to the, uh, the frame and get it centered so it doesn't rub. So, get the glue out. And just pull this up and reach behind. And put a nice bead of uh, glue on the back side of this thing. All the way around. Okay, let's got that. And just kind of squeeze this down to spread that glue around. You see how the glue kind of makes the uh, makes the um, kind of foam curl a little bit. That's okay, that's normal. Um, we'll just keep pushing this down and eventually that'll lay flat and seal up. I'll just let it spread out a little bit now. You see the voice coils are already centered pretty well. It's not, not rubbing at all. That's how you test, you just kind of push it down. 
just to see if you can hear it rubbing. This isn't really sticking yet. Give it a few minutes. And while you're doing this, you want to keep double checking, make sure your voice coil is centered. Starting to stick a little bit. See the bone is starting to stick down to the steel uh, frame of the basket. And it's starting to lose its curl. And right here is the joint that's laying pretty flat. And I put the little patch behind here so that where it meets the cone, the uh, the paper cone will have a nice a flat spot and here where it beats the basket it's going to have a little bit of a lump but that seems to seal okay. Alright, that's pretty much got it. It's stuck down well. Voice coil centered. Let this cure for an hour or two, and then we'll uh, attach the uh, frame, or we have modify that frame a little bit that was on here, that uh, decorative frame, because this uh, the diameter of the roll is bigger than the original, so it uh, the decorative frame kind of pinches in on the uh, the roll, so we need to cut back that. I'll show you how to do that later on. But this is just about ready. There we go. All right, the uh, speaker is all ready to go now. It's all glued in there quite well. Now here's the issue, though, is this uh, frame because of the roll diameter of the new foam, it doesn't fit on top anymore. So that's what happens when you're kind of, uh, you know, using uh, not the correct uh, surround. So uh, you just have to adjust. So what I'm going to do is take a Dremel tool, just kind of uh, cut this back a ways. I'll cut it with a uh, you know one of these cut off wheels and then maybe use the little drum sander to even it up. So we'll get it uh, trimmed back so that this will fit on properly so that we can mount it uh, back to the speaker uh, cabinet. Okay, so we got this kind of trimmed back a little bit. Go ahead and uh, move this, then use the sanding wheel to, uh, yeah, I'm going to take a little bit more trimming to kind of clean this up and see if it fits. Now 
Okay, got the uh, beauty ring all trimmed up. So now it fits properly on the uh, speaker without interfering. Allows the speaker to move. So we'll go ahead and get it mounted back in the speaker cabinet and hooked back up again. You can see this uh, speaker had no stuffing at all inside of it originally. So what I did on this one over here, I don't know why it's not focusing, is um, added some uh, just some pink stuff insulation. This is R13. Put a couple of rolls or a couple of uh, layers in. So I'm going to do the same thing on that one and um, you know, I read somewhere in a design, uh, speaker design book that you know that stuffing improves the uh, bass sound um, even on these uh, vented cabinet type speakers definitely on the acoustic suspension type so I'm going to go ahead and do that and uh, we'll get the speaker back in alright got a couple of uh, layers of fiberglass insulation in there so this cabinet is nicely stuffed and I made sure I didn't uh, this is the vent here for the uh, base reflex port slot that feeds into this part of the cabinet the bottom part so I didn't want to plug that up but uh, here's the wires for the woofer I'm going to go ahead and put it in and see what it sounds like Alright, these are uh, playing again, sounding great. Good for another uh, 30 years, hopefully. So, we got both speakers refoamed and uh, used a little bit of uh, Howard's Feed and Wax to kind of uh, clean up the, the uh, vinyl on the cabinets. So, it looks uh, nice and new. So, um, that's it. Another successful.